everybody. So here is my Swell Pro Splash Drone 3. And as you can see, it's got a gimbal camera, 4K camera, uh, which will automatically level itself with a horizon, and uh, which you can control tilt and uh, roll from the controller. And uh, as you can see, it's a quadcopter. It's got four propellers there uh, that will make it hover. Um, and on top here, there's a GPS feed. So the easiest way to fly it is in GPS mode. And it'll stay at a GPS coordinate. Uh, so it'll hover in one place. And then uh, using the controller, uh, you can move it about. And so the controller looks like this. And you got two uh, joysticks here. And the, the one on the left is altitude and rotation. Uh, so that means you, you can rotate which way the, uh, the drone is facing using that joystick. And then the other joystick is the one on the right is uh, your directional uh, in a, in a uh, horizontal plane at a given altitude. So it'll go forward, backwards, left, and right. Um, and then you have these dials here, which mode you're going to fly it in. Uh, GPS mode, Smart Cruise, ATTI, and there's a return home function. And then this controls your camera. Uh, so up is video, it'll start recording video. And if you flip it down once, uh, you get a still photograph. Um, so pretty cool. This drone is that it is waterproof and it can take off and land from the water. Um, I don't know of any other drone, camera drone, that can do that. And uh, when you're trying to film a boat sailing, uh, obviously if a drone is not waterproof and doesn't float, um, if you miss taking off and landing, uh, you're going to lose the drone. Um, furthermore, if, if it hits any piece of rigging, uh, which is not hard to do when you're sailing, um, it's going to crash most likely. and. Uh, if it crashes on the boat, it'll probably be damaged, and if it crashes and goes overboard, you're going to lose it in the deep blue sea. Um, so the splash drone um, certainly seemed like the way to go. And I've gotten some pretty nice video footage with it. Unfortunately, sad to say, that's where my praises for the Swell Pro Splash Drone 3 end. Um, I had this drone for about two months. I purchased it in October, had used it half a dozen times to get sailing footage, and the original camera, uh, which came with the drone, stopped working. And uh, as you can see, this camera. There's a, uh, there's a little hatch here where the uh, micro SD card goes in, and that's what you record all your video on. As you can see, there's just a little rubber, rubber plug here that goes over, um, that goes over where, where the SD card goes in. And you just have to push that in uh, before you fly the drone, and uh, that, uh, that will seal uh, the port here so water doesn't get into the camera. So anyway, I called Urban Drones, uh, who provide uh, customer service support and technical support for the Splash Drone. 
and uh, they also filled the order. I bought this drone off Amazon, but they filled the order. And uh, they, they told me to make a video of the problem I was having with the camera and send it to them. So I did that. Okay, so actually everything was working fine with the camera this morning. And, um, and uh, so uh, it seemed okay, so then I, I did a short flight. And then once I actually flew the drone, um, just for a couple of minutes, then the, the problem returned. So there's two problems I'm having with the camera. And uh, see if I can reproduce it here. So let's power our controller on. And power the drone on. All right. So as you can see, uh, the camera is centered, and if I roll, I can roll it, and I can adjust pitch. So everything is okay, uh, except as you can see the display. I have no, I have no image. Um, so what I can do is if I take the drone, kind of move it around. right there okay now and sometimes doing that I can get the image to return but it hasn't returned however as you can see see the cameras just uh, at an angle and I no longer have any um, I no longer have any control over its pitch so let's uh, let's do it one more time here So let's power the controller on, power the drone on, okay, and we still, we don't have an image, but we have regained control of the camera, so that's working. Whoop, there. Um, And once again, I've completely lost control. And I did have an image earlier, but it was it was a distorted image. Now uh, I can't get any image from the camera. Um, sometimes if I rolled it, ah, there we go. All right. So now here's the image I'm getting. As you can see, it, it's very distorted, almost hard to see anything. Um, and. Uh, but uh, once again, I've lost control. And this will happen, um, now it happens, the, the last three times I flew the drone, this is exactly what happened to the camera. Um, and uh, so those, those are the problems. Anyway, and then I get an email back uh, which says the following. Thank you very much for the detailed video. What we need to do is to see if the camera is factory defective. If it is, we will be more than glad to replace it. At your earliest convenience, please ship the camera to. Uh, please include a copy of this entire email thread. Uh, fill out the attached form. Uh, this process may take three to six weeks, case by case pending. Signed, Urban Drones. So, I sent them the, uh, I sent them the camera via priority mail. And, uh, and in a reasonable amount of time, I get a call from one of their technical, uh, uh, one of their technical repair people, and uh, he tells me right off that water got in through this uh, this hatch here, and he says that I did not seal it properly. Um, therefore, since it's user error, it is not uh, it is not covered under warranty. So. Uh, in order, so if I want to have my camera drone working again, then uh, the, my only choice is to purchase a new camera. So I did. So then I purchased uh, the newer, the 3 Plus camera, uh, which is their new 4K camera, which is does seem to be a bit improved over this one. So the new camera cost $630, and this is December 20th. 
and that is on top of the nearly seventeen hundred dollars I paid for the drone uh, which I received on October 15th of the same year um, so this drone is just a little more than two months old right now and I've had to spend another six hundred and thirty dollars to keep it operational just for comparison here um, look at where the uh, the USB ports um, go to this is my Olympus my Olympus tough waterproof camera and notice that this hatch closes with a latch and then there is an additional safety latch uh, which you close so there are two safeguards here to make sure that this hatch is completely closed so water does not get in there and I've had this camera for about five years I've used it underwater and um, still going strong no problems whatsoever and while I'm on the subject, I must say this drone is not very user friendly. Uh, take for example the battery charger. So you can see there's just a little white plug that goes in there. And uh, I find if you push that plug in too hard, it can be quite difficult to remove. Um, furthermore, there's three plugs, but there's only two batteries. So you just have to figure out by the size of the plug which plug it goes into and uh, they also tell you do not try to charge both batteries at once but there's nothing to prevent you from doing that um, and again every time you want to turn the drone on you have to remove the lid unscrew it and connect the cable uh, the power cable um, and getting the battery in and out is also somewhat awkward uh, there's just a little velcro strap that holds it in there and um, especially if you have big fingers and you're kind of fumbling around there and there's all this delicate electronics inside uh, it's hard to believe that that is going to last very long um, so as I say this is not the most user-friendly product I've ever used so then everything worked pretty well for about a month and uh, I started practicing just flying the drone and I, I would uh, use the, the cover on the uh, fatty knees dinghy as basically a trampoline and practice takeoff and landing and uh, it was it was all working well uh, until a couple of weeks ago and then I started developing this problem so once again I contact Urban Drones about the wobbling rotor problem and once again they quickly go on offense uh, the person tells me that if the, if the rotor is wobbling, it must be because the drone had crashed. And I explained that I cannot recall it taking any hard crashes, uh, a few hard water landings, a couple of times when trying to launch it, the thing flipped over, uh, but nothing I would consider a crash or, or anything that seems like it could possibly damage something. Uh, but this person insisted to the point of, of almost trying to lead me uh, into admitting that I had crashed it. So, anyway, then they then they explain as before to send them a video of the problem. I do that. I get an email back. This time they want me to fill out a warranty form, uh, but still the same deal. Uh, I would have to send them the drone, and then they would determine whether or not the, it is factory defective. Uh, if so, they'll be happy to replace it. If not. I'm going to have to pay for repairs. Now previously the drone was flying fine even with the with the wobbling rotor uh, and that was until about three days ago when I attempted to fly it and the thing started to rise and then suddenly just bolted off in one direction and I had to cut the power to the rotors and this time it did crash into the harbor um, and uh, so I, I went out in the dinghy I retrieved it and I uh, got it back to the boat and uh, now last time I had trouble with it uh, taking off uh, taking off and then flipping over uh, I had to redo the compass and accelerometer calibration and Swell Pro has lots of videos on how to do that uh, so I did that and, um, and then I tried launching it again and this time the drone almost came straight at me went over my head nearly crashed into the rigging of the boat frantically I cut the power to the rotors again and it crashed again um, and I was I, I was doing this in the harbor so there were boats around so was, I was I was afraid the drone might hit another boat or even worse hit somebody uh, this drone is pretty big um, it, it could definitely cause cause injuries 
Um, so, so I got the drone back to the boat, and then the next day I discovered that water had gotten into the drone, uh, maybe through that wobbling rotor. It's no longer watertight. Um, so anyway, now the video feed doesn't work. Um, so what to do? I think it's it's pretty obvious based on my my experience with their customer service that they're not going to replace anything for free. So at this point, that means I would have to buy a new drone. Not not the whole package with the controller or anything, but I'm going to have to buy another drone. So the question becomes, is it worth it? And my answer is no. Uh, I think at this point, it would only be throwing good money after bad money. I don't think the problems I've had with this drone are my fault. Uh, I think it is simply, this product does not live up to its billing. Uh, this company is not very good. Their customer service is not very good. And uh, I think it's, it's time to cut my losses and move on and look for other options. Uh, by the way, below this video I'm going to include a link of another independent review that was done of the Splash Drone 3. And I think you will see that these people had a somewhat similar story. And I remember the number one reason they listed for not buying a Splash Drone 3 is that it is unreliable. And they, they found, along with other problems, the biggest problem with this product is that it is, it is unreliable. And I would agree with that. Uh, so anyway, um, hope this helps if any of you are out there drone shopping. Uh, at least I would say this is a company that you would want to steer clear of.